everybody, welcome back to Sky Saga Alpha 4.5. We're here on my home island, and as you can see, nothing has really changed here since the end of the last episode. I did have a little bit of trouble getting that last episode up, but it was mostly just due to the fact that I was away. But I mentioned that in my videos a couple of times there. So, as you can see, not much has really happened. However, if I look in my inventory, I can show you what I've been doing since last episode. So I've basically just been doing some block conversions. I've basically converted all of my rustwood, except for a couple stacks, over into rustwood blocks. And DZK came over and gave me 12 whole stacks of iron ore that I've converted over to blocks, which was really great. Thanks, DZK, because now I'm actually going to be able to at least finish the head of the left guardian here today. And then, of course, I do have my crimsonite, which I farmed out in the last alpha ready to go and ready to be converted into blocks. And that's what I'm going to do right now, because I actually have a few little bits and pieces that I wanted to talk to you all about. So, a couple of really big things have happened in the last two weeks, uh, other than the fact that I was away, of course. So, to start with, I've actually got a job now, which is awesome. So, I am going to have a little bit less time to commit towards YouTube and Sky Saga and all that kind of stuff. Ultimately, it doesn't mean that I'm going to be changing what I'm doing here in terms of uh, Sky Saga, but it does mean that I'm not going to be able to add more content to my channel. I was originally intending to do a bit of coding, get back into playing Minecraft and modding Minecraft and stuff, and putting all of those things on the channel as well, but unfortunately with the, the job, I'm not actually going to be able to have the time to do all of that kind of stuff. So that means that, yeah, I'm not going to get to do all those things. However, when I finish studying at the end of the year, it will free up a little bit of my time. I mean, I will be going into full-time work after that, but maybe when I finish studying, I will be able to actually go ahead and add some of those little bits and pieces to the channel that I want to do. So, I mentioned coding. I am very keen to get a few kind of tutorials and um, like coding examples and stuff like that going on my channel. There's already a Pokemon AI on the channel. Uh, that if you haven't seen, it's a very, very long video, but if you kind of watch the first, like, five, ten minutes, you get a good understanding of how the thing works and how it's actually doing what it's doing and all that kind of stuff. And it'd be really cool to go through and rebuild that on camera and kind of show you guys how you go about building an artificial intelligence agent. Um, and you can use something very similar to do all sorts of farming in all sorts of old Game Boy Advance games because I'd be using Lua, which is a programming language which is attached to a Game Boy Advance emulator that you can use. So you could use, like I said, use a similar technique to build bots for all sorts of things. And the second thing I wanted to talk to you all about is the fact that I've hit a hundred subscribers on YouTube. Now, this may not sound like a big milestone if you watch a lot of YouTubers. There are lots of YouTubers up in the thousands and hundreds of thousands. But to me, that is an awesome milestone. And I want to thank you all so much for liking and watching my videos and subscribing to the channel. It's just awesome. And I never expected to have even that many subscribers, to be perfectly honest. So that's really awesome. And I'm thinking... To celebrate, I really want to do a little bit of a scavenger hunt, potentially over on the Sheepball Island, where we spent a lot of the first half of this season kind of over there and building all that kind of stuff, because it hasn't really seen a whole lot of use since I stopped uh, building on it. I am planning to get Sheepball up and running again sometime soon, hopefully within the next two weeks. Uh, just before the wipe happens, I want to try and get Sheepball up and running again, just to play a couple of games with a few people and maybe record them and put them up on the channel. But other than that, it hasn't really seen a whole lot of use, so it'd be really nice to be able to get over there and get some people over there. So I'm thinking about, yeah, setting up a bit of a scavenger hunt over there, maybe for some recipes or even like a hundred dark hearts or something along those lines. But I'll talk a bit more about that at the end of the, the video, once I've kind of got my plans in order and I'll be able to tell you like the date that things are going to happen. It'll probably be sometime this weekend. Potentially the Monday is going to be the best day for me to actually get into the, the island and do it. And I'll set it up uh, Monday evening Australian time, which will be Monday morning American time. So those of you that are in America and play on American time zones actually have the same chance of getting into the island and getting things as Australian players do. So that's the plan at the very least. 
So I'm just going to quickly finish up converting over all of these blocks of crimsonite. And once I've done that, I might leave maybe 50 or so crimsonite in ore form, just because I'm not quite sure how much of this I'm going to need. And just like that, the two iron guardians are now, well, mostly done. They've got heads and bodies and feet right now, of course. I do need to put arms in, uh, so the plan is to have one arm hanging down on the outer edge, so we'll have one arm down this side and one arm down that side, and then the other one kind of across the chest holding a sword facing straight down into the ground. That's where these statues are going to go, uh, but for the moment I actually just want to leave these up here as they are, just for a little while, just so I get used to having them around and all of that kind of stuff. Now, the other thing is that I'm not quite sure I actually managed to get the positioning right. So, the weird thing about building statues like this is that because of the way your perspective works and the way thing your vision is, this little out jut section doesn't actually seem to factor too much into where the center line between these things are. I've actually centered them on their feet line right now. So, if you have a look straight down there, when I pull this down so that you can't see that shoulder pod, that is the perfect dead center between these two things. This this strip here, this clay strip that I've got running all the way down. That's the other thing. This episode, I kind of want to replace this as well and change this out for probably a wooden bridge. Because there are now bridge slats in the game that I can make up. So I'm thinking about changing this out for an inkwood bridge slat bridge. But then if I actually have a look up and remove this block that I accidentally put down here... So my point was that if you look down, this is the perfect center between the feet, which is exactly what I set it up to be. But then, if I look up, this isn't feeling quite right. I'm just going to turn the minimap off so that you get a better picture of this thing. So, it's okay because your body is, like, your eyes are naturally adjusting to kind of this lower area when you're looking at this run down the middle here. But, in actual fact, the dead center feels like it's around about here somewhere. So it's just off to the side of this line a little bit, and there's nothing I can really do about that, because it's not as if I can move either one of these statues by a half block, because that's just not going to make any sense. So this is where they are, and this is where they're staying for now. I mean, as I said, when I get the... Um, like, I need to build the arms up, and once I get those arms in place, it's going to change the whole look and feel of the thing as well. Now one other thing I do want to have a look at doing at some point is potentially putting green or red blocks up in the eye sockets there. So I might even put in a couple of crimsonite blocks, but as you can see from the crimsonite that's all the way up there, it's only going to be a very, very light touch, so you're not really going to be able to see it too well, but it's going to be, you know, one of those attention to detail things. So those people who are looking for it are going to be able to see what I've done. I also need to go up into the middle here, so I haven't actually blocked off the holes in the bottoms down here yet. Simply because I want to go up into these things and place a whole bunch of torches in through the chest up there, so that it actually lights itself up a little bit at night. And all going according to plan, I should have that done before the end of the episode here today, so we'll actually be able to take a look at this thing both at daytime and at night time as well. So the next big plan for today though is to get out these crimsonite blocks and to run a very rough view of what I want the lava flow down here to be like. Now I'm not 100% sure I have enough blocks here but I do have nearly 200 crimsonite that I can fall back on and build more blocks out of and all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna jump up here and get started and we'll see what this lava flow ends up looking like. I'm not going to promise anything magical because this is definitely the first time I've ever attempted to build a lava flow. So we'll see how this one goes. So I started building up the lava flow just a little bit and as you can see it looks very very blocky and not really what I wanted at all. I mean it's not got the natural look that I was going for and I am trying to go for in this type of build. And I think the biggest part of that is that there are hanging blocks here. You can see that there are unsupported blocks, and especially if you move around a little bit, the problem just gets even worse. Like, you can have a look here, and you can see all sorts of, like, unsupported blocks and stuff like that. So, 
That's really not what I was going for. Because this is lava, it's supposed to flow downhill. So the other thing I've been having a look at is... I've just pulled off a few more photos and a few more images of lava, and I've noticed that I'm actually getting a lot of, like, red and yellow kind of mixed together in a lava flow. So what I'm thinking about doing is going back into my stash and grabbing just a whole bunch of gold and turning it... T popping out some gold blocks and adding some gold blocks into the middle of this thing and making this like a three wide stream of blocks at the very least. So we're going to have a one run of gold and then two runs of red down the outside. Here is attempt number two at the lava. So as you can see I've kind of run it down from a, a top pool all the way down the cascades and then it hits this point here which is actually supposed to be, you know, like a rock or something in its way, and it's then supposed to split off to two streams and then kind of curve back around to kind of a pool at the bottom here, but if I stand back and have a look at this thing, just the gold, all of that gold, like, I, I don't know, it's just not good, I don't think. And now I have a hundred and something gold blocks that I don't think I'm ever going to use because the contrast here is just way too great. I can't use these two blocks side by side. It's just going to look awful together. So we're going to have to try something else. I might get some coralite out, actually. Uh, sorry, not some coralite, some coral stone out. And see how that goes, because the gold is just, yeah, too contrasty. And also the gold is actually a lot shinier than the crimson eye is. So maybe if I throw some stone in there, that might work. Um, I mean, Coralite would also probably work, but I'm never going to get enough Coralite to do this quantity of building with. Because, as I showed in the Purite tutorial, Coralite is made, found in exactly the same ways as Purite. Which means that, I don't think I'm, like, you're not going to get enough to do a hundred blocks worth of Coralite. That's just way too many Explorer points to gather. And considering there's a cap on the Explorer limit, I think it's it might even be physically impossible to get that much Coralite in a short space of time. So, like I said, I'm going to ditch this plan, maybe get the Coral Stone out and see how the Coral Stone goes. Not 100% sure on that one yet, but, you know, I might as well give that a shot. And worst comes to worst, I can go back to the original plan of having... Uh, just the Crimsonite, and then we can run a bar of Crimsonite down here and have it split one way. That'll work too. It's going to just be a little bit less impressive of a lava flow. But then again, that might be what this needs. I might need to just go back to basics with this thing. So, that's the Coral Stone in place, and admittedly, that looks even worse than the gold did. At least, the gold had a little bit of... Well, the gold was very shiny, and so it kind of fit in with the other metal in that respect, but this is just dull and just doesn't fit in at all. So I'm going to have to drop back and change what I'm doing here, change the way this thing works and potentially like get rid of this entire wide section at the top here and then just run a single line. So I'm thinking this looks a whole lot better. I might need to kind of cut down on the curve a little bit here and start bringing it back this way somewhere. but. I like the, the single block line of Crimsonite being my lava flow. I think this looks, it looks better at the very least. Um, so I'm not really sure which way I'm going to go with this yet. I might either increase the flow out further around and then bring it back, or I might just bring it back and kind of snake it down to the bottom. I think I'm going to try both and see what ends up looking best. Or I might just snake it out a little bit wider and then... As I bring it back in, I'll stand back and have a look and see how, see how it goes and see what it looks like. And yeah, we'll go from there, basically. But I think it definitely looks a lot better than having the, the really thick stream with the gold in the middle. It is not going to stay like this. So this is it with the Crimsonite and the side flow like this. And I really don't like it. I, I can be straight up honest with you here, I really, really don't like that at all. It just, it's unbalanced, I think, is my main problem with it, which is a little bit weird to be saying when I'm talking about a lava flow. But, I mean, even if I just, like, use the 34 I've got left and just kind of did a secondary flow 
this way it might balance things out a little bit, but I think ultimately I'm going to end up removing all of this and just kind of flowing it a little bit down here and a little bit down there instead. Because even adding in a kind of secondary flow from somewhere up here is probably the best bet. Somewhere around here it would have to be. We'd have to add in a secondary flow around there. I'm not sure that this is actually going to fix the problem. It might even add to the problem. Um, which is not what I really wanted to do, to be perfectly honest. I want to fix this thing up and make it look good, obviously. So if I jump back down here and have a look at this, we'll have we'll see. We'll see what this actually ends up looking like. You know, it might work. Maybe. I've just realized I do have a missing lava point in here somewhere that I need to fix up. So I'm going to fix that up, fix this up, kind of make that kind of curve around here as well, and we'll, and we'll see, we'll, let, we'll see what this ends up looking like. ta -da! Two lava flows. So, this like, place is now looking a whole lot better, so just to kind of run you through what I've changed. I haven't really changed much on this side, although I do want to clean up a little bit down the front here, maybe even pull this kind of flow back in a little bit. I ended up with two crimsonite blocks so I might just pull this flow back in a little bit and that will give me a few more blocks just to work with later on but if I step back here you'll see that up here this kind of split looks a little bit more natural now and that's because I ran this lava flow straight down into the split whereas before it kind of ran here and then where this one block out is so I kind of left that there as a little bubble but where that one block out is it kind of ran down from there and then it split Mostly this way, but then a little bit that way. And that's what that kind of... There was a bit of a weirdness here, because the split was very, very uneven. Now, in this case, the split is actually pretty even. I think it looks pretty good, to be perfectly honest. So I think I'm going to leave it as is for now. So the next big thing that I'm going to do is, just like I did in the caves down here, I'm actually going to put in some braces underneath with red smoke that they give off, so that... If, as you get close to this thing, you'll see like red smoke kind of wafting up from the lava, which is going to be really cool. I mean, it's going to give it a, a good effect. I might even do a couple with uh, honey wood or something. If I can find enough honey wood, I might put a couple in honey wood up there as well. Just going to give a little bit of red and orange going on through the top. So you can see this guy here is made of verdonite, and that's because it's just going to be hidden in here underneath all of this stuff, so you're never actually going to be able to see it anyway. So I'm just going to put one of these in on camera, just so I can show you what I'm talking about. So I'm literally just going to open this thing up just like that, and throw this guy in there. I might throw some blocks in behind like that, so that you don't see this ugly verdonite um, brazier in there. I mean, it's not altogether all that ugly, but... It doesn't fit with the theme that I'm going for, and it's definitely not a, a thing that I want shown around on my build. So, there you go, and now you've got this nice little smoke effect coming in off the lava. So I'm probably going to do these every few blocks or so, all the way up both sides of the lava trail, and definitely at the top there as well. Probably put a few more, but in iron at the very, very top, just so I've got kind of smoke coming off those. Just in case, you know, people ever kind of wander up to the top, they'll get a bit of smoke happening off the top of the volcano there as well but that's a really cool effect and I really like that so I'm going to definitely keep doing these put some more in around the place so I'm not sure how well this is going to come out in the YouTube render but oh have a look at that this is with kind of braces every single block here and then it's every few blocks from this point on so I'm kind of up to here right now this is where I've made it to I need a few more I've just collected a few more and I'm actually looking at so, as you can see, this is all rustwood ones right now, but I'm actually looking at potentially swapping a few of these out for some groundwood ones or warmwood ones. Now, I've just tried putting together a warmwood one, and the warmwood one gives off a kind of weird grey-coloured smoke, which I'm not too fond of. So this is the, the weird grey colour smoke I was talking about, and that's not really what I want, but it might be useful, maybe. And then I've just built another one, so this is a gold one, but it's got ground wood in it. So I'm just going to check if this gives off the right colour smoke next to the red. So that's a lot better. I think I'm going to go with ground wood. So we're going to get some rust wood and some ground wood ones up all the way up the lava flow. So I think I'm going to slide in a few of these 
just kind of in amongst the stuff that I've already got. And then finish up with these as well, just so it's going to get a little, you know, a couple of colours on the way through, uh, up through that lava flow. And it's going to just give that a little bit more detail, which would be quite nice. And it would give that touch of yellow that I was trying to get when I was using all of that gold earlier, that I obviously didn't ever really need. So, I'm going to pick all these up, I'm going to destroy this one, and I'm going to start making some more groundwood ones as well. The touch of orange that the groundwood brings into this is actually working really, really well. So if I have a look around here, so you can see the, the touch of orange I think works pretty well. I might need to lower them down just a little bit so that rather than getting a full smoke plume like that, you only get like the top little bit. And I could do that simply just by digging back into the volcano and dropping this brazier down by one block. Then you'd end up with this bit that you can see at the top that would be buried inside the block. And then this tiny little puff here would actually be just above the block. But for now, I think I actually quite like that. And it just adds a little bit more depth to the whole lava experiment that I'm going for here. And you can definitely see that all the way up, which is a good thing because of course lava should be bright and vibrant and fiery. So adding all of this smoke to it has really, really helped a lot. I am running out of the red braziers, but that's okay. I'm just gonna, I think, put these on the ground now and build the rest of my red ones out of blue as well. I just wanna put them on the ground just so that I don't mix up which ones are which, just so I don't get a surprise when I put one down and find I'm putting down orange rather than red. Then of course I need to do up this side and then all the way up through the top as well. Once again, I'm not really sure how well this is going to render through on YouTube. I'll have a look at it, at it in my video editing software. I might have to kind of adjust the light levels in post, but we'll see. I mean, I think it should turn out okay at least. And with the light sources, you can at least see what I'm trying to talk about anyway. So. All right, while well, the day is coming back, I'm going to go and do some more braces, and we're going to put some more in, and we'll have a look at this thing when nighttime comes around again. And here is the finished flow at nighttime. Have a look at this thing. I absolutely love that. That looks really, really good. Now, there is one big problem that I'm going to have to address at some stage, but probably not right now. So. See how I've got a bit of yellow tinge down in here? This isn't actually because I've put groundwood braziers in here. This is actually a bug. So there's a bug that every now and again, with braziers, especially when you have a lot of them, will swap what color they are to something else that you've seen on your island. This is most common when you've got lots and lots and lots of different colors of braziers on your island. You'll find that they kind of like rainbow pattern a little bit when you kind of move past them. But because I've got only the two colors, but I've just got a lot of the two colors, I end up where some of them change their color kind of at random. Now, I was kind of okay with this when I was putting this up because while I was while I got up to here, the color changing was only happening on the volcano itself. And that would be fine. If it was only on the volcano itself, I would have no problems because every time you look at this thing and look away or, you know, come back to the island, it will change and it will give it a bit of a dynamic living feel. However, the problem happens when these braces down in here change. So as you can see, I haven't actually changed anything down in here, but I'm getting smoke effects of different colors coming through and I'm getting this groundwood happening, which I really, really don't want down in this cave. I mean, it looks okay and I could live with it I guess but I'm gonna change this up because I really really don't want these groundwood smoke plumes in this cave I really want to keep this as a kind of yellow uh sorry not yellow red cave that it was and not have any of this yellow in here then again we'll see how it goes I mean I'll be playing around with it a little bit over the next week it's not going to be uh, pri like a, a key priority for me for today so or over the next week so if I get used to it and I think it's not a problem I might even leave it because that way as you keep coming back to my island over and over again you'll see a bit of a difference you'll see a bit of a change you'll see kind of natural living things happening so that is it for the lava flow now that leaves just one thing that I wanted to get done today that I haven't yet done, and that is this bridge, because this bridge is absolutely terrible 
as you can see, even if you walk all the way back here, we still get a little bit of the smoke effect happening, which is really nice. I quite like that. So I'm going to replace this bridge really quick, and then I'm going to talk about the scavenger hub that I want to set up for my 100 subscriber special. And just once again, thank you all so very much for watching me and following along and leaving likes and comments and all that kind of stuff. That is amazing. Um, and I really enjoy like getting your feedback on things that I'm doing. So yeah, if you like what I'm doing today, let me know. Jump down into the comments, tell me how what you think it looks like, and you know, give me some suggestions if you think I could make it look a little bit better. So right now, I'm just going to go and make up a whole bunch of bridge slats, slats, and then we'll be back and put this bridge in. And with that, it is the end of the episode. So there we go, that's one bridge in place. This is all made out of inkwood bridge slats, and I think that works really well. I like the uh, kind of worn and used look that it has already, just because it's the way those bridge slats work. I like that a lot. Now, so this is it. This is the island. I think it's coming along really, really well right now. Um, but as I said, it is the end of the episode. I am completely out of time for this week. So we've got a fair amount done. I think we've finished off our Iron Giants, we've finished a Lava Flow, and we have a bridge in place. So this island is coming along spectacularly. Um, as I mentioned, I will be doing a scavenger hunt over on the Sheep Ball Island on Monday. I've changed my mind a little bit about the timing, so I want to do that at... 5 p.m. East Coast time on Monday for all of you over in America. So, if you haven't already, make sure you go and add Sheepball as a friend. I will be on that account both Saturday and Sunday, just to make sure I get all of the people who add Sheepball before the scavenger hunt happens over on Monday. Check out the description below for a little bit more information. But I think at this point in time, I'm going to be scattering a few recipes and a hundred dark hearts to celebrate the hundred subscribers that I now have on my channel. So once again, thank you all for watching. You guys are awesome and I will see you next week.